welcome to the session 3 so in this session uh, we will look at module number 4 uh, where we will discuss about the torsion so torsion is a phenomena which is usually seen in the rotating shafts which are used to transmit power from turbine to the generator so during the process of uh, transmitting the power the shafts are subjected to torque or the twisting moments and which causes stresses uh, in the shafts so in this photo you can see uh, a turbine which generates energy mechanical energy the energy is transferred from the turbine to the generator through these shafts and the shaft is coupled to the turbine as well as the generator so during the process of transmitting the power the shafts rotate at higher speeds which causes uh, because of this there will be torque induced in this shaft material and this torque will give rise to shear stresses and normal stresses in the shaft which are developed in the shaft during the process of transmitting the power so while designing the shafts we should take care of this torque how much torque is required and accordingly the diameter of the shaft is designed is calculated using the material properties of the shaft so here the shaft which is output from the turbine is coupled to one more shaft here depending on the length of the distance of the turbine and the generator a shaft is connected in between the generator and the turbine so we are using couples couplers here to join the shaft to generator and the turbine so during this process the torque or the twisting movement is applied on this shaft so whenever you design the shafts for power transmission we should we should know the torque applied on this and based on this torque uh, because of this torque applied uh, the in the shaft the internal shear stresses or resistance will be developed and those stresses you have to understand we have to analyze and uh, based on this analysis you can calculate the diameter of the shaft and you can select the best material for the shaft so that the chances of failure will be less when the shaft is in function or when it is operating so similarly we have this is the bottom view of the automobile and here you can see a shaft which is called as torque torque shaft is used to connect the engine part to the rear wheels rear wheel drive so here also the shaft will be rotating at different speeds and to design this shaft we have to understand the torque developed in the in the in the shaft and the resulting stresses has to be analyzed so one more uh, application where you can see where you can understand the torsion or the torque induced in the shaft is the gear shafts so gears are mounted on the shafts here and again the gears are rotated at different speeds to transmit the power from one point to other point so here also the torque will be exerted on the shafts and during the rotation the during the twist and, and the torque applied uh, internal stresses will be developed in, inside the shaft cross-section so here you can see that the torque will make the shaft to twist at one end and which is related to the other end and which induces the shear stresses at the cross-section of the shafts so because of this shear stresses failure might occur in the shaft 
and uh, during design we have to uh, during design of the shaft we have to use make use of theories of failure and factor of safety and you have to design the shaft that is you have to find out the appropriate diameter of the shaft so some examples where torque or the twisting moment is applied in a daily life you can see the screw cap uh, to open the nuts and uh, here you can see a scale material which is this is not a circular cross section and here also a twisting is applied on the scale material and here we have one more cross section square cross section bar and the twist or the torque is applied in this material and you can see how the distortion is occurring across the cross section usually the shafts are circular in cross section but some cases particular cases the cross section will be different square or rectangle so here we have a torque spring usually it is used in many of the stationary applications and other automobile applications to rotate to act as a hinge between the parts so in this diagram we have a circular shaft of diameter with cross section area a so here we have applied the torque at one end so the at the other end the equal and opposite torque will be induced or assisting the torque will be induced in the shaft at the other end and uh, if you take the radius of the shaft as rho or small r so the torque is nothing but the twisting moment is nothing but force into distance so if you integrate that that force over this area so this uh this this shear force is nothing but uh, stress into area so we know that the stress shear stress is shear force by area so the shear force we can write in terms of shear stress tau multiplied by the area so if you integrate the radius into shear stress into da over this area torsional area we get the torque so when the torque is applied you can see at the cross section on these elements shear forces are induced which causes the rotation or twisting of the shaft so this shear force causes the internal induces shear uh, shear stresses at these cross sections so at all cross sections shear stresses will be induced so here you can see one more uh, schematic of the shaft so we have the shaft surface which is undeformed and when the torque is applied clockwise or, or anti clockwise so at the one end it is clockwise so at the other end it will be opposite in the in the anti clockwise direction which causes shaft to rotate by some angle and also here one more important thing is that the shearing stress or the shear stress due to torque or torsional loads will not be uniform throughout the cross section so you can see the stresses the shear stress at the cross section circular cross section from the center to the outer surface so at the center the shear stress will be zero and as you move outside along the radius the shear stress tau max uh, will be maximum at the outer fiber of the or outer surface of the shaft
So this is a solid circular shaft and below we can see the hollow circular shaft. So this is a hollow circular shaft. So here in this hollow circular shaft the inner diameter and the outer diameter the stress will be shear stress will be minimum at the inner diameter and as you go outside the outer surface towards the outer surface the shear stress will reach maximum. If you look at the deformations, so here we have a shaft, one end free, other end is fixed. So when a torque is applied, when a tor torque is applied, if you analyze uh, for a particular length of this shaft from the center, you can see that if you consider a point A here, before applying the torque T, the point A will move or will be moving to, it will shift towards A dash when you apply the torque T. So you can see the length AB will get twisted by towards A dash B. So this angle A O and A dash this angle is taken as phi or theta and that is called as angle of twist and this angle of twist is directly proportional to the the magnitude of the torque applied T and also this angle depends or proportional to the length of this shaft so you can see that the angle of twist it will depend upon the torque applied and it depends upon the what is the length of this shaft we are using and in case of uh, circular shafts you can see that whenever the torsion or torque is applied the cross section of the circular shaft remains plane it will not get distorted unlike other cross sections so here we have the circular cross section you can see that the planes you take any plane it will be circular only it will not be distorted because the circular or solid circular shafts or the hollow circular shafts are axisymmetric. Mm. And if you take the non circular cross sections which are non axisymmetric, the shafts will be distorted. You can see here, once subjected to torque, that means the cross sections will not remain the same. They will get, there will be a warping of the edges because the cross section is is not uniform and if you look at the stresses developed inside the material whenever the torque is applied <coughs> so you can see that there are some elements in the material which have the faces parallel and perpendicular to the shaft axis and these elements are subjected to maximum or shear stresses maximum is subjected to shear stresses only so because of this rectal materials you know that rectal materials uh, they are weak in shear stress or they fail by shear stress and uh, because of this maximum shear stresses uh, along the perpendicular and parallel faces of the shaft the rectal materials they fail at cross sections whenever the torque is applied and also there are some elements we can see that where the normal stresses maybe tensile or compressive stresses will be induced at some different elements of the material because of the different orientation of the shaft so here you can see the normal stress on the element you can see that it is at 45 degree uh, on this plane so on this plane which is at 45 degree to the shear stress plane the normal force or the normal stress will be occurring so 
So this is uh, how we can consider an element which is at 45 degree to the shaft axis and the force is calculated with respect to the shear stress. So we can see the alignment of this, we can take the cos of 45 degree. So cos of 45 degree will be opposite by hypotenuse. So by taking this we can see that at 45 degree the normal stress that is the tau max maximum shear stress will be occurring at 45 degree to the elements. <coughs> so we can see that here element A is, uh, is in pure shear and element C is subjected to tensile stresses on two faces and compressive stress on the other two faces. So as I told you that uh, in torsion, if particularly for ductile materials, they are, they are weak in shear or they fail in shear. Whereas uh, brittle materials, they fail, they are weaker in tension than the shear. So this is the failure of the ductile material in torsion. And this is the failure which is observed in case of brittle material. So here you can see that at this plane, at this uh, here at this element, uh, we have the the shear stresses. So because of the shear stresses, a total material breaks along the plane where the maximum, where the shear where the shear stress is maximum. So the shear stress is maximum along this plane, which is perpendicular to the axis of the shaft. In case of uh, brittle material, you can see that. It, play, it breaks along the plane perpendicular to the direction in which the tension is maximum. So at 45 degree cross section the normal stresses will be maximum. That's why you can see that in torsion the metal, metal material fracture will be at along the surface 45 degree to the axis. So here you can see in in ductile material the shear forces are acting perpendicular to the shaft axis and the fracture occurs along this particular plane which is perpendicular to the axis whereas in brittle material the normal stresses will be acting at 45 degree planes at 45 degree to the axis so the shear or the fracture occurs by this nature. So here in torsion one more important thing is that we have to analyze the different parameters, geometric characteristics, geometries of the shaft and we have to relate geometry of the shaft with the torque applied and uh, also the shear stress developed and the material properties. So a equation you have to develop which is related, uh, which relates the torque the shear stresses and the geometry of that shaft. So here we have a initial observation wherein we have a shaft of radius r and length l. A torque T is applied <coughs> and you can see that initially we have a line AB and uh, whenever the torque is applied the line AB is uh, B the point B shifts from B to B dash as we discussed earlier so this angle B B dash is taken as the angle of twist theta so different books or different authors use different uh, symbols for this so here we are using theta as the angle of twist in previous cases we saw that it is phi which is used as angle of twist and this is the axis of the shaft so here you can take that length of the shaft is L which remains constant 
and you can see when the torque is applied the deformation is represented with angle of twist which is called as elix so the straight line ab moves to a ab dash so this is called as elix deformation so again we have to make some assumptions during uh, derivation of the torsion equation here one more observation is that circular cross sections will remain plane we discussed in the previous slide they do not warp and perpendicular to the axis of the shaft and the cross sections do not deform that means there is no strain in the plane of cross section and the distance between the cross sections do not change here so the axial normal strain is zero and uh, the cross section rotates as a rigid entity about the axis of the shaft these are some of the observations assumptions you have to make uh, before deriving the torsion equation so you have a schematic diagram showing the shaft here front view and side view and this is the cross section from the side uh, with radius r here and this is the angle of twist theta and this is a diagram you can see here three dimensional view of this shaft here so here it is angle of twist is taken as phi don't worry about that it is phi or theta whatever it is and here you can see the same diagram which is shown <coughs> the length l is here radius is here and this is the angle of twist is shown here and this is the this is the gamma is the again nothing but shear strain <coughs> so you can see whenever the, the twist torque is applied uh, we get diff two angles here so one angle is at the center of the axis a uh, center of the shaft so that is angle of twist the other angle occurs along the length of the line so this angle as you can see here it is called as the shear strain so whenever the torque is applied we get two angles one on one along the cross section from the center and one along the length of the shaft so we relate this angle of theta angle of uh, twist theta with respect to the shear strain gamma so this is the initial observation you have to make uh, while deriving the torsional equation and uh, so here you can see that uh, shear strain gamma is here in three dimensional view this is the angle of twist so in this we take a particular element at uh, so we take a element dx at a distance of x for our analysis so this element is taken so here you can see that uh, uh, whenever uh, as i told you when the twisted we get the shear strain angle so so we have this arc here so this whenever the torque is applied the point a moves from a to a dash and this this arc this is taken as arc so we equate the length of this arc with respect to the shear strain and also the length of the arc with respect to the angle of twist so here you can see with respect to angle of with respect to the angle of uh, twist the length of the arc will be r theta so the length of this arc you can see here the length of this arc small arc which is formed by shifting a point a to a dash the length of this arc will be equal to radius into the angle of twist so length of the arc which is produced on the at the perimeter of the cross section is r into theta so r is the radius of the shaft theta is the angle of twist so similarly that that arc is common this arc is common to along the length also so this length of the arc 
is related to length and the shear strain gamma so you can see that length of the arc is l into gamma so using these two length of the arc these two equations we can relate r theta is equal to l into gamma so this gamma is nothing but shear strain we rearrange the equation so r theta by l so here we are relating the radius the geometry of the shaft that is radius and the length of the shaft with respect to the angle of twist and the the shear strain of the shaft so once we get the concept of shear strain so we have to understand we know that the shear stress and shear strain are, are related by uh, one more constant that is modulus of rigidity so modulus of rigidity is nothing but shear stress by shear strain just like young's modulus or modulus of velocity e is equal to normal stress by normal strain sigma sigma is equal to that is e is equal to sigma by strain epsilon similarly in case of uh, shear stresses we have rigidity modulus or modulus of rigidity in case of normal stresses we have modulus of elasticity so modulus of rigidity is nothing but shear stress by shear strain so this equation we again incorporate here so g is the again elastic constant of the material it is the material property of the shaft so using that we get g theta by l is equal to tau by r so putting gamma is equal to putting gamma is equal to g to tau and putting this using these two equations we and modify this rearrange this we get g theta by l is equal to tau by r so this is one part of the torsion equation wherein the shear stress induced in the shaft is related to geometry of the shaft that is r and l and also the shear stress is related to the material property modulus of rigidity and the angle of twist so here this r we can take it to any radius you can use it for any radius we so follows that shear stress is directly proportional to the radius r and is maximum on the surface so when the radius is maximum that is capital r okay so this uh, this equation you can use and also you can apply this equation at any radius of the shaft from center to the outer surface so we take this as small r so here we have uh, next part this is the first part of the torsion equation and when the torque is applied it is uh, the internal stresses shear stress will be developed and which is equivalent opposite to the torque applied so here we have so in the next part of the derivation this is a shaft with radius maximum radius r and we take a elemental uh, ring around the shaft with radius small r and the thickness of that element will be dr so the area of the ring is 2 pi r into dr so this r it is the perimeter 2 pi r into the thickness dr will give the area of this ring and we know that shear force acting on it is tangential so the shear force will be acting tangential to this ring and the shear force is nothing but shear stress into area shearing area so df is nothing but shear stress that is a shear force is nothing but shear stress into area so di we know that for this element it is 2 pi r and uh, we take the small element and integrate the stress or the torque over this full 
uh, area of this cross section of the shaft so the torque is applied dt along the at this shaft at the at this radius of the shaft so you can see that the torque that is force into uh, radius will, give, will produce a torque and if we modify that equation we get this uh, area that is dA is nothing but pi r square so in this equation that is tau is there area is 2 pi so r into r will give if you integrate that we will get r square into dr so since the shear stress is equal to this uh, from this equation uh, we have tau is equal to g theta into r by l if we substitute that we get so this is the torque so before that torque is nothing but force into radius so dt is equal to df into r so we get this equation as tau 2 pi r square into dr so this force uh, this because of this force and the distance r we get the torque gt the torque is nothing but the force shear force into r so this df into r will give this equation and uh, and also from this shear stress from this equation is d theta into r by l so substitute that we get the torque differential torque as g theta into 2 pi r cube by l into dr so this torque is only for this element okay so if you integrate this torque over the full cross section we get you have to integrate that so if you want to uh, get the torque on the whole cross section from this shear stress ok we have to integrate this torque over the full cross section that is from 0 to the full radius so from 0 to radius r if you integrate this torque we get the total torque along this cross section of the shaft so we get this equation a torque and here one important observation is that this 2 pi integration r cube dr is nothing but it's called as polar moment of inertia or polar second moment of area so this is from the engineering mechanics we observe this and uh, this is important here and this is called as polar moment of inertia or polar second moment of area and it is taken as j so now if you take this as j this equation will become t g theta by l into j so j is nothing but polar moment of inertia so it, it is a geometrical characteristic a geometrical parameter of the cross section of the shaft so now we have one more equation t by j is equal to g theta by l so we have two equations one is 1e and the other one is 1d so here the shear stress is related to the angle of twist in the first part of the equation 1d and in case of uh, 1e second part of the equation the torque is related to the angle of twist so if you combine 1d and 1e we get this equation so this equation is called as torsion equation so to remember this and based on this equation uh, we can design the shafts for various applications to transmit different powers so this equation you have to this is the derivation the final equation and this is called as torsion equation so it is nothing but t by j is equal to g theta by l is equal to tau by r so here if you take this part of the equation 
so it is called as stiffness equation if you take this part of the equation it is called as the strength equation because shear stress is involved here shear strength is involved here and the angle of twist is it is a measure of stiffness of the shaft material so when calculating or while designing we take uh, this part of the equation and uh, we we get the geometry of the shaft for example torque or the the polar moment of inertia which is related to the diameter of the shafts and also if we take the strength consideration we take the shear stress and we take this part of the equation so you can take any part of the equation to find out the unknown values so this will understand when you solve the problems so coming to polar moment of inertia so i told you that it is a geometrical parameter so in case of solid shaft the value of j will be pi d to the power 4 by 32 you remember this and this is from the basic uh, principles mechanics and uh, if you take the hollow shaft which is having uh, diameter small d and uh, outer d outer diameter d so this is pi by 32 d4 minus d4 small d4 so just remember this so polar moment of inertia for hollow shaft is pi by 32 capital d to the power 4 minus small d to the power 4 and when it is solid shaft it is directly with diameter d4 d to the power of 4 so this we will be using when solving some problems so coming to the as you know that shafts are basically used to transmit power so uh, you studied in your uh, physics or uh, in your earlier mechanics engineering mechanics that power transmitted is given by 2 pi nt by 60 so here it is it is the n is nothing but number of revolutions per minute it is generally called as rpm revolutions per minute and power will be in watts when you take uh, the torque in newton meter and rpm is taken in uh, rpm that is revolutions per minute that minute is converted to 60 seconds so if you take this power is equal to 2.8 into 60 and when you take n in rpm torque t in newton meter and p you will get it in watts so power unit of power is watt here so 2 pi n is nothing but angular velocity or angular displacement of the shaft So just remember this equation. Power is 2 pi nt by 60, and also we have some uh, conversions here. So before we had the units of power as horsepower (hp). So this is the uh, SI unit watt. So one horsepower is 750 watts. So this equation you have to remember. This is used for solving the problems. So that's it for this session. thank you in the next section we we'll look some we'll solve some problems based on torsion equation